This is high-profile foreclosure defense lawyer Roy Oppenheim. I was quoted at one time as saying that, you know, foreclosure defense is the bottom of the barrel. It's, it's, it's lower than being a divorce lawyer. And this is the story of how he spotted a business opportunity that turned bottom of the barrel foreclosure work into one of the biggest practice areas in town. In, in, the, in the pecking order and integrity of, of, of legal practice, it was at one time deemed, you know, just, just a, a, a very low prestigious area of the practice of law. I think, I think we have remarkably turned that around uh, in, in a decade, but, but going into it, you know, you know, you go into a cocktail, but, oh, I, I defend homeowners in foreclosure, and people would sneer at you. <laughs> you see, Roy is a Princeton graduate who rubs shoulders with Harvard alum. He started his career as a corporate lawyer, working with firms that represented Jacqueline Onassis, Big Wealth, and major developers. When he moved to Florida in the 1980s, he continued to represent big developers making real estate. But that all changed when the housing market imploded in 2008 and a new sort of clientele walked through the door. Everything we were previously doing in representing developers and builders and refinancing, all that stopped. It stopped on a dime. And one day you'd come into my office and instead of it being crazy and phone ringing and everyone running around, it was like a morgue. And you could hear, you know, a penny drop on the carpet. This is a story of how the Oppenheim Law Firm kept the lights on and found opportunity when the economy seemed most bleak. We didn't know what to do like everyone else. And then slowly but surely, people just started to wander in. The big question, though, was how could a firm build a business representing clients in financial duress? Once we decided we were going to start doing this foreclosure defense, and, and the gates just opened up. And, and with a matter of months, we were busier than we could have ever wished for, envisioned, and then we, you know, it just reflected how, how dire the situation was. It was deeply nuanced work. So we, we felt we were going to figure out ways to represent all these people and then figure out how to get paid. And it was unclear at the time how we were going to get paid. And then when we started winning these cases, at first it was like man bites dog, you know, homeowner beats bank, right? How can that be? How can a homeowner beat a bank, right? And then as time evolved, so many people started winning and we started winning so many cases it, it was no longer news but initially it, it was always news <laughs> soon oppenheim was at the forefront of a new class of foreclosure defense attorneys and he was spotting weaknesses that meant bad news for lenders typically we were arguing standing typically we were arguing procedural deficiencies uh, we were arguing evidentiary issues we were arguing irregularities uh with with hearsay double hearsay the documentation the banks were presenting uh i mean it was just the arguments were, you know, as we got through it, the argument just kept coming, coming forward. That madness, that frenzy created opportunity for Oppenheim and others. Everyone was caught off guard. And so the documentation just, just wasn't, wasn't there. I mean, countrywide, for example, I mean, a lot of times they didn't even keep their promissory notes. They scanned them and then shredded them. I mean, I don't know who told them to do that, but that was, you know, certainly not, not the, the, the best way to, to keep your documents. And then, of course, they went out of business, and, and then you know, Bank of America picked them up. But, I mean, it, it was just insanity. And everyone knew there was something. It just kind of rubbed me wrong that, you know, how this collapse occurred. And so slowly but surely, we started to dissect the transactions uh, and look at what, in fact, had occurred. And we began to realize that, that the banks, in most circumstances, did not have the prerequisite evidence to bring an, an effective foreclosure suit in the state of Florida. And soon, it seemed everyone in town was catching wind of the growing industry. What I found really funny is that top firms like Greenberg, Ackerman, um, and a whole bunch of other firms ended up doing foreclosure prosecution on, on a bulk basis. <laughs> so it, it, all of a sudden, you know, the. The, all the mighty had fallen, you know. We never thought that a Greenberg Traurig would bring a homeowner foreclosure defense, you know, a foreclosure or that Ackerman Centerfit would, would do so, or a Greenspoon Martyr would, would start bringing these kinds of actions on a, on a bulk basis. Never, it never occurred to us because these, you know, we, we, these, these are top firms, but, but it, there was money to be made and they figured they might as well jump in like everyone else. Florida was one of the hottest hit states in the last foreclosure crisis. 
and that meant brisk business and new hurdles for attorneys like Oppenheim. It was literally one of the darkest eras in the period of, of, of the Florida legal system. And, uh, and there are vestiges and manifestations that continue to this day that, that we have to deal with. And there are, you know, routinely flare-ups. And sometimes, you know, I hope that we could put this behind us and I can go back to just being a conveyancing lawyer and helping my developers and, and, and my other real estate clients with their investments. And then I get drawn back in to this whole mess. And I don't choose to get drawn back in, but I just get drawn back in as an attorney because there's some crisis that occurs that, that, that warrants my involvement. In the decades since the crisis, hundreds of thousands of cases have worked their way through clogged dockets. And these days, as the last few make their way into court, Oppenheim hopes for a return to normalcy. Through that all, um, we were able slowly to get back to what we were doing before the crisis. And now we're back at representing some of the best developers uh, in the country. And uh, I think they find it, frankly, amusing. And I think they like the idea that, that we're fighters and, and that, you know, we're willing to, uh, to do what, what, it, what, what we have to do to get the job done. And, and the way I see it is that, you know, if we could work for homeowners who had very little money and do what we were able to do, you know, what can we do for someone who actually can afford to pay for my services? Thanks for listening. For the Daily Business Review and ALM, I'm Samantha Joseph. You can always hear more conversation with industry leaders on law.com.